So looking at number two, what's my base? What's my base? So uh, I would go, okay, this is the inverse of 3 to the x, which is 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 9. Which means the points that I'm going to use are the inverse of this. It's going to be 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2. Oh, and this has an asymptote of y equals 0. This has an asymptote of x equals 0. So far, so good. Okay. Now I'm going to do my list. I really didn't leave you enough room here to list things carefully. I would, if I did type this again, I'd make it bigger with more room. Anyhow, expansions, compressions. Well, I see a vertical expansion by 2. Yeah? I see a 1 half. Now that's a horizontal expansion by 2 because it is next to the x and everything's backwards. Any reflections? That's convenient. No negatives. Uh, one right and one down. Okay. Let's walk through the transformations. Vertical expansion by 2 means the y's are going to change. Sure, be one left. Absolutely, it'd be one left. That's what I wrote. I'll make that L a little clearer so you can read it better. Note to self, fix the recording on the internet so people online don't think you're stupid. Note to self, don't say those things out loud when you're recording because you can't go. Uh, vertical expansion times by two times. Lost my projector? Froze? Really? Let's do that. All sorts of funny stuff happening today. Let's do that. Should be back again shortly. Have patience, mm -hmm. children. Okay, we're back. One, two, three. Yeah, I do that. Here. Okay. Um, vertical expansion times by two times by two. Oh, that's an X, not vertical. Horizontal expansion times by two times by two. That's not going to fit. One left. That'll become a one. That'll become a 5. Ah, that'll become a negative 1. One left. Oh, I should also have horizontally expanded that by 2, but what's 2 times 0? Still 0. Uh, 1 down. It's going to become a negative 1, a 1, and a 3. Okay. Here's what I got. I got an asymptote at x equals negative 1. Yes? Yes? I got 1 comma negative 1, I think. And I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 comma 1. What does every exponential graph look like? Like this or like this? You know what every single log graph looks like? It has a vertical asymptote or a, I got a, a vertical, can't really do this one really well. A vertical asymptote. This log graph, I'm pretty sure, just it, it's going to have to curve this. It's going to go. Well, except Mr. Duick, why don't you go through the points? Shut up. It's harder than it looks on this tablet. I think it's going to look like that. What's the domain? Everything to the right of negative one. Range all reals. Asymptote, x equals negative 1. X-intercept is a decimal. I, I wrote this up and then I went, I should have not included x-intercept. Y-intercept is uh, also a decimal, I think. So the only way to find them would be to cheat and use your graphing calculator or solve it. But I'm not going to freak out about that. I'm working you to the graph right now. Is that all right? 
Am I right? Anybody get the, yeah? Someone nodding? No? Yes? I think I'm right. Is that okay? By the way, if you want more practice, of course, you can always do the examples that I skipped over. So where it says example one, two, three, and four, if you want a bit more practice, you can try those ones and check on your graphing calculator if you're having trouble. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. So I have for you a take-home quiz. Turn in your workbooks, if you would be so kind, please, to turn to page 151. Page 151. And I apparently need to delete the ink in this lesson. Delete ink. Page 151. Page 151. Ink has vanished. Yay. Now, I, I want to preface this. The first part of this lesson, Tyler, ain't going to be on your test. The second half, yes. And I'm going to tell you, though, this concept, the title says identities. The concept of an identity is going to be a major part of trig, a huge part of trig, a phenomenally large part of trig. So I'm showing you the concept of an identity, 151. I'm showing you the concept of an identity right now to let it actually kind of percolate. So identities. It says in mathematics, it's important to understand the difference between an equation and an identity. This is an equation, and the reason it's an equation is only a few values of x satisfy it. You could solve it, Asar, the values are negative 2 and positive 2. This is an identity. There is an equal sign, there is an equal sign, there is stuff on either side, there is stuff on either side, but this is true for an infinite number of x's. In fact, for any valid uh, value of x, you put it in this side, you put it in this side, you'll get the same answer. An identity is essentially a true statement, not an equation, a statement that's true for not just multiple values, but all values of a variable x. Doesn't seem very profound yet, but let me tell you another identity. Don't write this down. We didn't call it an identity. We called it a rule. That was the power rule. Is that true for any value of x that you're allowed to stick in there? Any x that's positive? And any base that's positive but not equal to one? Yes. So that's an identity. One of the things we're going to look at in trig is proving identities. It's probably going to be the single toughest concept of the entire year. But we're going to spend, like, I think six lessons. Like, we're going to do it very patiently, very carefully. We've already met the following identities. The base change law, the log base B of C is the log base A of C over the log base A of B. The product law, multiplying two logs inside the log is the same as adding outside the log. The quotient law and the power law. What we're going to look at today a little bit is trying to prove them. Now here's the problem. Even though there's an equal sign because we're trying to prove that they're equal, Kara, we can't use our equation solving tricks. We can't add 5 to both sides, for example, because that would be assuming they were equal in order to prove they were equal. We can't divide both sides by 2, because that would be assuming they were equal in order to prove they were equal. If you're trying to prove that an identity is equal, they are the same thing. You have to only work on one side or only work on the other side, but you can't cross stuff over. Otherwise, they'd be easy, but that'd be because you were assuming they were equal to prove that they were equal. Here's an example, example one. It says, use the following steps to prove that this works. We looked at the pattern a few days ago. We said, yeah, it seems to work. It's how we did the log 
base 5 of 17. We said that's ln 17 over ln 5, or log 17 over log 5, or log base whatever of 17 over log base same whatever of 5. Prove it. OK. We would let, if we were going to do this one, the log base b of c be x. There's our first step. Spencer, what's the second step? Can you rewrite that as an exponent, please? I yelled at you guys last class in love saying it's high time that you were able to glance at a log and see the exponent. So Spencer, my friend, what to the power of what equals what? No, you can't say log. We're changing it to exponential form. What to the power of what equals what? No more logs. Darn right. With authority, though, no more questions. Absolutely, Mr. Do it. By the way, this is going to be your first question on your test. I'm either going to give you a log and say write it as an exponent, or I'm going to give you an exponent and say write it as a log. And I would consider that less than C minus level question. Like, this is the one I expect. It, well, this is the one if you get that one wrong, you're flunking the test. B to the x equals C. What does it say for step two, Spence? Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Log base A of B to the x equals log base A of C. Now what? Use the power law. Where could I use the power law? Ah, what can I do with that x? And then it says solve for x. Get the x by itself. Brett, how would I get the x by itself? Absolutely. Sorry, wrong Brett, that Brett. x equals the log base a of c all over the log base a of b. And then for the final step, and I'm kind of running out of room here. I had to write a little large. Replace the x with the original x value, which you said was log base b of c. Right? Do you see what you have? You have the log base b of c. That was your original x value. But you've also shown that it can be rewritten as the log base a of c over the log base a of b. And what you've just done, Alex, is you proved the power, the cha base change law. Now, that's a fairly complicated proof. I'm not going to be asking you to do one like that. What I will be asking you to do when we get to trig is what are called t-table proofs. They're called t-tables because the table looks like a capital letter T. Turn the page. Example three is really what I want to jump down to. It says this. Prove that this is the same as this. Prove it. And what we always do is we draw a great big capital letter T. We call this side left side, or sometimes even LS, abbreviation for left side. We call this one right side, or sometimes we abbreviate it as what? QZ. What are you? Yeah, RS. Okay. So I'm gonna first thing I always do if they haven't done it for me already, I write down the question because it's no longer blank and I feel better. So I'm going to write down log x cubed plus log of 1 over x equals 2 log x. But not equals. I've got a line down the middle. That line down the middle is saying, you haven't proved they're equal yet. Don't you dare cross things over. Don't you dare add 5 to both. Like, for example, you might think, Kara, could I minus this to that side? No, because that would be assuming they were equal in order to prove they were equal, even if that made the question way, 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 way easier. No, no. Whenever I'm doing an identity, my rule of thumb is very simple. I start with the uglier side. Which side looks yuckier? Left side. I'm going to start with that. It's always easier to take something yucky in math and tidy it up than to take something tidy and somehow break it down and make it yuckier. So I'm going to, uh, well, what could I do with this left-hand side? 
make it one log. How did you figure that out? How many logs are there on the right-hand side? One. Why don't I try writing the left-hand side as one log if I'm trying to show they're equal? So one of the things I'll teach you is whenever you're doing an identity, you always flip your eyes from side to side, side to side, side to side, trying to say, well, there's, oh, there's hints in what the other side looks like. Can I combine these? Are my bases the same? Yes. Then let's combine these. This is going to be uh, positives on top. Oh, I think it's going to be that, actually. Doesn't it simplify to that? Log of x. It's really x cubed times 1 over x because it means multiply. But wouldn't that be x cubed times 1 divided by x? Yes? Oh, does that simplify? How many x's on top? How many on the bottom? How many left and where? What are we trying to show, Ellen? Now, you will find, especially in trig when we're doing like eight line identities that are long and tough, two or three lines from the end, often you'll see it. You may even get a little nerdy adrenaline rush when you see it, That's it seriously. So I don't know if you suddenly saw it here, but right when I wrote that down, I went, oh, wait a minute, Ellen, what can I do with this too? Does the left-hand side equal the right-hand side? Yes. Some teachers will teach you to do this. Don't write this down. What do you think LHS equals RHS stands for? And you can. Justin, am I somewhat of a nerd? Just a tad. Traditionally, for actually for hundreds of years, after a proof, Back when everybody spoke Latin, you would write. You can write that down if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. It's Latin. It's for anybody here speak Latin and know what it stands for? I had a German student a couple years ago who, who did. It stands for Quo Ertas Demonstrandum, which means which was to be demonstrated, which I was trying to prove. We used to joke in Ryan in university that it stood for question easily done and was the biggest lie on earth because most of my university proofs were four and five pages, like 40 lines. Okay. Oh, there are proofs that are several thousand pages. Uh, Fermi's last theorem, which was finally proved about 15 years ago by Andrew Wiles, I believe his proof is about 600 pages long. And probably only about 100 people on the planet can follow it and understand it. But they checked it and it's correct. So three lines, nothing. I always like to write QED. That's that's you know when they score a touchdown, and they spike the ball. That's me spiking the ball. You don't have to, but it's also nerdy. I like pulling out the Latin thing. Example four. Example four. Prove this. Okay. Which, uh, by the way, normally I would write down the question, but I've done this one before, and I know we're going to run out of room. So just this one. T if you did, that's fine. But this, just this one time, I'm not gonna because it's typed up there. Which side's uglier? I think definitely the left side. Okay. What else do you notice looking at the left side and looking at the right side? Because there is something here that's giving me a real hint as to what my strategy is going to be. Do you see something on the left side that doesn't match the right side? The bases. I'm positive I'm going to use the base change law. What am I going to change the bases to? I think 10. Because first of all, that's one that we kind of like. That's the one on the right-hand side. And what are the two bases on the left-hand side? 10. See how I was able to kind of put those hints? 5 and 2. Come on, 10. So what's the base change law? OK. 1 over plus 1 over. If I wanted to rewrite this as base 10, I would write 
log base 10 of x over log base 10 of 5. Mr. Duick, you didn't write the 10s. When I don't write a base, Dominique, what is the base automatically assumed to be? 10. It's a three-level fraction. Shut up and deal with it. And this is going to be log base 10 of x over log base 10 of 2. I have not yet got my nerdy adrenaline rush. I have no idea where this is going to end up. I would probably do this just to tell myself that was one term and that was one term. In fact, I think what I'm doing here, Justin, is I'm dividing by a fraction. Multiplying fractions is the easiest. Top times top, bottom times bottom. How do you divide by a fraction? Ooh, someone remembers their math eight. If I had to go three divided by five sevenths, I don't. What do I do instead, Brett? Three times seven over five. If I have to go one divided by this, I don't. I'm going to go one times this flipped. This is going to be the same as one times the log five on top over the log of x plus 1 times the log 2 on top over the log of x. By the way, Tyler, will this 1 times and this 1 times make any difference at all? In fact, I wouldn't have freaked out if you had just said, hey, I know that simplifies to that. I'm going to have to do this, and I'm going to have to do this, because I'm going to run out of room otherwise. So now what? How do I add, since I, how many fractions do I have on the left-hand side here? Two. How many do I have on the right-hand side? Let's see if I can combine these as one fraction. Now, how do I add fractions? Hmm? How do I add fractions? What do I need before I can add fractions? I need a common denominator. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What's my denominator in the first fraction? Log x. What's my denominator in the second fraction? Log x. I have a common denominator. I can add this. Now, if you suck at fractions up here, you can make a little note. 2 over 5 plus 1 over 5. It's not 3 over 10. What's 2 over 5 plus 1 over 5? 3 over 5. You add the tops and keep the denominator when you're adding fractions. So let's add the tops. And keep the denominator. Now, I have no idea where I'm going, but I'm just being meticulous, careful, and trying to be a bit clever by looking at the right side and saying, what does it look like? Now what? Hmm. Oh! Did you get your nerdy adrenaline rush? Did you see it already, where we're going to end up? Because you're saying that these bases are the same, adding is the same as what? And I'll get the log of what? 10. What is the log base 10 of 10? What do I have on the top on the right hand side? <gasps> I think we can do this. This is the log of 5 times 2 <coughs> over the log of x. And I'm going to go cross out the 5 times 2. I'm going to put a 10 there. And what's the log base 10 of 10? What's the log base 10 of 10? Turns out it works out to a 1 over. And on the bottom, I have a log. It is base 10 when I don't write a base of x. Cool. Eltas.
demonstrandum, which was to be demonstrated. Question easily done. Ah, kicked it. Justin, these are weird. I'm fully expecting you to have a tough time with these. If you do, you're normal. If you don't, you're one of the Eric Bing freak types, which is good. Helpful. But what I want you to see, like if you find this tough, I don't want you to be like, oh, I'm stupid. No, no, these are tough. I'm going to give you a few to try, and then we're going to go to part two of the lesson. See if you can prove number three. Number three shouldn't be too bad. See if you can prove number four. Take a look at number four. Can you tell me what strategy you're probably going to try? There's one that's screaming out to me as the first thing I'm going to try. Base change. You know why? Three different bases. Probably try changing everything to base C. Maybe. I don't know. Try number five. 5A is pretty tough. Eight is good. Nine is good. And then what I would like you to do... Uh, No, can you turn, ah, let me pause for a second in the video here. So if you want to turn to the blank page, page 150, and write a little heading, we're going to practice some if-then questions, because there's a couple on your quiz. So as a heading on page 150, you can write if-then questions. This is that weird one that I made a bonus question on the last quiz, and now I said, hey, no longer bonus, fair game. These are almost always multiple choice on your test. On the provincial exam, they were always multiple choice. And since this is the last year I'm teaching Math 12, I'm not going to change your tests. So here is your first one. It says, if log base, well, copy it out. If log base 3 of y equals c minus log base 3 of x, where y is positive and x is positive, because you can't take the log of a negative, then y is equal to... See a few of you squinting. You do that. It's about as big as I can get it. If you're still squinting, two words. Black says. And if you want to also, on the left-hand side, quickly copy out the answers, because I've tried to teach you, Trevor, when it's multiple choice. For Pete's sake, glance at your answers for help. Right? Maria, what's this question asking me to find? Then what? Find the word then. Then what? It wants me to get the y by itself. Okay, I'm. The, you know what? I'll eventually do that. Now, I look at this equation, this expression that they gave me. Are there logs in every single thing? No. No log there. You know what I would do first? I'd get all the logs to the same side, because that's how I taught you to solve equations. Then algebraically, we should probably try the same strategy. So the very first thing that I would do is plus the uh, log base 3 of x over. I have no idea where we're going. I do notice in my answers, what don't you see in any answer anywhere? A log. I have a feeling we'll probably write something as an exponent at one point along the way. I do see some exponents, but I don't know. So I'm going to write this as the log base 3 of y plus the log base 3 of x equals c. Cool. 
Carly, I have no idea what to do now, but I'm stubborn, I'm clever, I'm a good academic student. I refuse to quit. I've got to try something. What might you try? What log law can you suddenly now apply? I tried combining them because I noticed my bases are the same. I don't think that's a coincidence. Adding two logs is the same as what? Okay. Instead of writing y, x, I'll write x, y alphabetically. How does that help? Or does it? I'm stubborn. I'm clever. I'm an academic student. Brett, there is no way I'm allowing myself to freeze up. By the way, I'm trying to show you how I would do these on a test. I would be stubborn. However, if I couldn't get it within 60 seconds, I would circle it and come back to it later. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on one question. That's also bad test writing. So I've gone through the rest of the test. I've come back to this one because it bugged me. i got to try something. What else could I do? If you know one, you know both. So you ready? Spencer, you're going to once again tell us what that is as an exponent. What to the power of what equals what? Maria, what did you say this question was asking us to do? Oh, which really means isolate the get the y by itself. How can I get the y by itself? Ah, I just got my nerdy adrenaline rush. I see where we're going. That's one type of if-then question. The other classic one is where they give you two log expressions, like example two here. It says number 17. Yeah, there was number 17 on the provincial exam about 15 years ago. It says if log base 3 of x equals 15, then the log base 3 of 1 third x is equal to... Haley, can you recognize this as an if-then question? See the if and see the then? Now, sometimes there won't be a then. There will just be a comma, because when you put a comma in English, it sort of implies then. But almost always, they'll do an if-then. Okay. My strategy is always start with the then, this thing. Try turning it into the if. Oh, and there's uh, apparently four answers. And the answers are all numerical, a little weird, but we'll see. And I have three things once I look at the them that I check for. First thing I always check first is base change. Are my bases the same in the if and in the then? Okay, then I'm not going to use base change. If not, I would. But Joel, they would pick this question very carefully. My second base would be a base 9 or a base 27 or something that works well with a 3, trust me. But base change? No. Nope. Then I look and I ask, how many logs do I have in the then? If I have one term, I break it up. If I have more than one log, I combine them. I think here, I just have one single solitary log. So my first strategy is going to be, I'm going to break this up. I have a 1 third and an x. Mathematically, what's happening between them? So what will that become outside the log? This is going to be the same as the log base 3 of 1 third plus the log base 3 of x. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ryan, can you read this to me, please? Base 3, base 3, ba say it again properly. Log base. Can you read this to me? What is the log base 3 of x the same as according to this statement? Oh. Kind of nice. 
hey, <clears throat> what's the log base 3 of 1 third work out to in your head without a calculator? Not one. Log base 3 of 3 would be one. It's a log base 3 of 1 third. Negative 1. Elevator. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. This whole mess works out to that. And I'm going to argue that even Mitsu can get that one in his head. Mitsu, add those two together. What's the answer? Woohoo! Kind of see how we're approaching these? By the way, you need to practice these. And there's a bunch on the great big log review that I gave you. Number three. This is actually from an Alberta provincial exam. On the Alberta exams, they had numerical response. This was a written. Uh, if I gave this to you, it would probably be a multiple choice question. But still, we'll handle it. If log base B of A equals 0.82 then the value of log base B of B over A, correct to the nearest hundredth, is? Hmm. Isabel, see the then? I'm going to work with this thing. Vlad, what's my base here? What's my base here? I'm not using the base change law. So I always check that first because it's easy to spot. Um, do I have more than one term or just one term? One term, break it up. More than one term, combine them. So one term, I'm dividing. What's dividing inside a log the same as Vlad? So you're telling me that this is the same as the log base b of b minus the log base b of a? I agree. Oh, Emily, what's the log base b of b? With authority, please. One. Oh, and Emily, according to this question, what can the log base b of a, all by itself with no exponents or anything, be replaced with. Apparently this is 1 minus 0.82 and I think it's fair for me to expect you to be able to subtract two decimals from one in your head with no calculator. I would expect you to be able to do that without a calculator too. 0.18? Yeah? How many sig fig? That's physics. couple more. I think three more, two more. Number four, what used to be number 32. If the log base 2 of b equals c, then the log base 4 of b equals... Hmm. If the log base 2 of b equals c, then the log base 4 of b equals... Hmm. And then the options are c over 2, c squared, 2c, or root c. I'm guessing a 2 is going to show up somewhere in the answer, since they're kind of hitting everything. Can you see what I'm going to try? What's screaming out to me as my first plan of attack here? Dominique, you're right, louder. When I say louder, I actually mean louder, not the same volume. Scene one, act one, and take two, and action. Dominique, base change. Can you see how you can glance at it and tell? Hey, two and four. Ah, but notice what they picked for the bases. They didn't pick two and seven. They picked two and four. Or they might have picked two and eight, or two and 16, or two and 32, but I'm going to tell you, they're not going to pick two and 20. They're going to contrive these. So I'm going to rewrite that second, the then, as base 2. If I rewrite this as base 2, 
This is going to be the log base 2 of b over the log base 2 of 4. Now, that's the base change law, and you absolutely want to make sure you know this one. Now, Brett, can you, uh, Redman, can you read me the very, very top right here? I disagree. You know what that really is? And, oh, haha. What is the log base 2 of 4, Emily? Hey, didn't see that coming until about one line ago, but hey. Starting to get the hang of these a little? Like there, there's, a, there's a science and an art to these, and really all I can do is show you a few and say, here's a bunch, knock yourselves out. Last one. If log base 5 of x equals 4.26, what's the value of log base 5 of 25x squared? Try this one on your own. Base change? No. Oh, one big log? Break it up. Oh! Ryan, here was my strategy. Multiplying, same as adding. Oh, I noticed the x doesn't have a squared here. I don't want the x to have a squared. And log base 5 of 25, that's 2. Plus 2, log base x of, of sorry, 5 of, oh, log base 5 x, oh, oh, uh, th th that's a 4.26 with a 2 in front of it. Oh, and a 2 plus in front of that. your homework. Uh, I gave you this, a logarithms review quite some time ago, I think. Did I not? The great big unit review? We're approaching the end of the unit. Four more lessons, I think. So I'm going to start to give you a few questions from here. Specifically, I'm going to give you some if-then questions that you can start whittling away at. Now, these are not all for homework right now. These are due the day of the test. But if you're wanting some more practice on these types of questions. Now, if you can't find this great big one, jot down the question numbers elsewhere and hunt for it later. Or I have a few extras still buried away somewhere.
Number five is an if-then question. Number 15 is a disguised if-then question. Number 20 is a disguised if-then question. T5 is a disguised if-then question. Thirty-eight is definitely an if-then question. Fifty-one. Fifty two, fifty eight, Seventy, sort of. It's a simplify log question, but that's okay. I thought there was one more. I knew there was at least one more. Eighty-five. Hundred and three, then you come to some written questions. If you're wanting more practice solving the logarithmic and exponential equations, lesson last or two days ago and three days ago, which I kind of yelled at you last day saying was really important, you can try something like number seven, number nine. 11, 12, those are logarithmic. Here's an exponential equation, number 15. 16 is another log equation. 18 is another log equation. Gives you some to try. Is all that due? First of all, try the workbook identity stuff. It's good practice. Then you can start whittling away at this, and you have a take-home quiz. Okay? Okay.